I'd like to start this off by saying that Paul Stamen's work was a motivating factor in my interest in the biological sciences during my formative years, and he, as an individual, continues to be, although not in the same way. I have purchased some of his books, and I am generally appreciative of his enthusiasm and obvious influence on mycological interest, even if I don't agree with everything he does, such as the sale of homeopathic treatments. Because of, and in spite of this, nuanced appreciation, I am critical of the sycophancy that has developed surrounding his endearing works towards better agricultural and ecological health, which is a goal I happily support. Paul Stamens is often lauded for his accomplishments in bringing attention to unique properties of fungi. Whether pharmacological, gastronomical, agricultural, or ecological, Stamens has made many statements, recentering on the robust usefulness of fungi as a whole. Recently, he even mentioned the famous Nagaki study regarding Physarum polycephalum's ability to find the shortest path to food in a maze, but not after first being exposed to an identical maze and being allowed to expand and explore all options. A few years ago, on April 18th, 2015, Paul Stamen's Twitter account shared an American Livewire article that was tweeted by PO.ST post entitled, Man Holds Patent That Could Destroy Monsanto and Change the World. I'm not sure if simply sharing it counts as an endorsement on his part, but there was no commentary on the tweet. In this article, there are a lot of claims that I hadn't heard him make before personally, and it wouldn't be the first time a popular scientist was mischaracterized for political gain. This particular article is not the only one of its kind. There are others, some 117,000 or so, with identical or nearly identical paragraphs hosted on various websites. I've seen a lot of similar sentiments promulgated throughout the internet as well, often citing statements as a radical and revolutionary individual for developing novel fungus-based products and concepts, and perhaps articles like these are the sources of some of these sentiments that I would consider to be somewhat misinformed, particularly in regards to pest control. One such sentiment is summed up with the following paragraph from the aforementioned article. Quote, in 2006, a patent was granted to a man named Paul Stamets. Though Paul is the world's leading mycologist, his patent has received very little attention and exposure. Why is that? Stated by executives in the pesticide industry, this patent represents, quote, the most disruptive technology we have ever witnessed, end quote. And when the executives say disruptive, they are referring to it being disruptive to the chemical pesticides industry. What has Paul discovered? The mycologist has figured out how to use Mother Nature's own creations to keep insects from destroying crops. It's what is being called smart pesticides. These pesticides provide safe and nearly permanent solution for controlling over 200,000 species of insects, and all thanks to the magic of mushrooms." End quote. Almost the entirety of that paragraph was dubious or false in one way or another, the only factually true statement was that Stamets was granted a patent in 2006. For the rest, by what metric is Paul Stamets the leading mycologist? Not that he hasn't made mycology much more popular and hasn't contributed to a number of positive and motivated people in the community, but I am not sure how to quantify that. Besides which, his patent does get a lot of attention, as I mentioned about the articles online, and later I'm going to add to it myself. There aren't any citations to back up the executive quotes, of course, and the disruptive nature of the patent doesn't seem to have had as egregious nor gregarious an impact as foretold, since Monsanto is still around, obviously. In fact, there are at least nine patents that Paul Statements has filed over the years, with the aforementioned patent being one of a series that concerned mycopesticides. The most irksome thing about this paragraph is that it makes it sound like the use of entomopathogenic fungi as a mycoinsecticidal agent is more recent and novel than it actually is. Enter Bouveria bassiana, the causal agent of white muscardine disease in silkworms and other arthropods. V. 
viewers in the agricultural community may better recognize this fungus as the active ingredient in Botanigard and Mycotrol. What they might not be aware of is how long the insecticidal agents have been in use. A patent called Formulations of Entomopathogenic Fungi for Use as Biological Insecticides, CA2173953A1, was filed by Mycotech Corporation alongside Clifford A. Bradley and James H. Britton on October 12, 1994, predating the earliest mycopesticide patent I could find from Paul Stamets by the better part of a decade, USS 6660290B1, and that was on October 4, 2000. In 1991, a sample of Bouveria bassiana, taken from an infected corn rootworm, designated RCEF-201, was selected and re-isolated in grasshopper hosts. It was through this re-isolation process that the isolate BBGHA-1991 was selected, which stands for Bouveria bassiana, grasshopper active, 1991. On pesticide labels like those for Mycotech Corporation's Botanigard, it was depicted as Bouveria bassiana GHA. BioWorks currently uses the same designation. That pedigree puts the agent's development and discovery about 15 years prior to that of the one purported by this article and the hype that surrounds it. Besides the historical accuracy such information contributes about this important biopesticidal development, it also provides context as to why statement technology is still rather unique, if not nearly as revolutionary as inculcated by various social media posts. But I discovered that if you took the mycelium without the spores, something else happened, which was truly amazing. They became super attractants, and they became super attractants to ants, to termites, and a surprising array of other types of insects. And so the insects, in this case an ant, becomes mummified, and then, boing, a chorus of mushrooms sprouts out of his head. So it goes full circle. Essentially, Stamens has developed a way to use grain infected by entomopathogenic fungi as a vector for said fungi to control pests that would consume or come into contact with the grain. Instead of a spray application of conidian spores, it's grain spawn bait, which I would personally much rather use over something like fipronil to control ants, for example. In patent US 6660290B1, Paul's statement explicitly states that the use of multiple entomopathogenic fungi may be necessary to combat different pest species, and even includes Bouveria bassiana by name. Hopefully this video articulates my point about the novelty of mycoinsecticides clearly, in a way that isn't intended to be a condemnation or a deflation of Paul Stamen's work and the enthusiasm he exudes and fosters in other people, which I find very beneficial. Simply put, I wanted to write a common misconception about a nuanced topic in my wheelhouse. Maybe it will serve to inspire the development of more scientists contributing to the world of pest control, and I wish Paul Stamen's the best in his endeavors.